Exodus chapter 23 verse 25 all the way to verse 28 but ye shall serve the Lord your God and he shall bless your bread and your water and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee there shall nothing cast their young nor be barren in thy land the number of thy days I will fulfill he said I will send my fear before thee and will destroy all the people to whom thou shalt come and I will make all thine enemies turn their backs unto thee I will send hornets before thee which shall drive out the Hivite the Canaanite and the Hittite from before thee the Lord bless his word in Jesus name I'm speaking quickly on the subject this morning, the covenant of service. The covenant of service. This will be part one. I perceive that we might continue next Sunday, so, but this is part one. The covenant of service. We have as an objective to understand kingdom service, what service in the kingdom is all about, and then to understand the dimensions of service the dimensions of our service to God what dimensions of service exists and then to understand what it means to serve acceptably acceptably or profitably I'm sure that maybe by next Sunday We'll look into detail on the fourth objective which is understanding the profit of service that is our fourth objective understanding the profit of service scriptures make it clear that there are two very important proofs of a man's dedication to God. We have confirmed variously that if God created us for himself, we are duty bound to be dedicated to him. And there are two very important proofs of dedication to God. According to Matthew chapter 4 verse 10. Then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord your God, and him only shalt thou serve. Thou shalt worship the Lord your God, and him only shalt thou serve. If anyone is dedicated to God, two things cannot lack. One, worship. Two, service. Thou shalt worship the Lord your God and him only shalt thou serve. How do you know a man that is dedicated to God? How do you know a woman that is dedicated to God? That person possesses worship and they possess service. Listen. A life not lived in the worship and service of God will be a life wasted for time and eternity. Where a life is not lived in the worship and the service of God, that would be a life that is wasted for time and eternity. Thou shalt worship the Lord your God and him only shalt thou serve. So the first major thing we have learned this morning is that worship and service to God are two of the most important proofs of our dedication to God. This morning, however, service shall be our focus. And, no, and it is important to note that service in the kingdom is not just an action but a covenant. 
is a covenant work. Serving God is not just an activity. It is a covenant. What does it mean? It means when man fulfills the duty of service, God responds to that action in manifestations. Other way to say it is where man is duty bound to serve his creator, the creator is duty bound to respond to the service. It's a covenant. It is not just something good, okay, let me just do something good. For, no, no. Where, the, where man is duty bound to serve his creator, the creator is duty bound to respond to the service. You don't need to beg him. He said, ye shall serve the Lord your God and he shall bless. See, shall serve, shall bless. You shall serve, he shall bless. It's, I mean, if you do your part, you don't need to beg him to do his part. Ye shall serve, he shall bless. So, it is important to know that service is a covenant. Just like supernatural supply is a covenant. As long as the earth remains seed time and harvest shall not cease. If there is a seed time, you don't need to beg for a harvest time. I believe that this should wake up a lot of Christians who sit in the church complacent, begging God to do everything for them, and yet they are doing nothing for God. It's a covenant. Question then is, what is kingdom service all about? I'll give two definitions in this service, and then next service, another two, and then so on. One, service involves waiting on the master for instructions and commands waiting on the master what will you have me do lord like paul the apostle is said waiting on the master in john chapter 2 verse 5 when they, at the wedding in Cana of Galilee where there was no wine there were people who were on standby waiting to be sent they called them servants Mary the mother of Jesus said to the servants whatsoever he saith unto you do it anything he tells you to do do that is I am on standby Lord that is the origin of the kind of songs you sing here am I use me here am I, use me As the Lord needs somebody Here am I, use me I will go, send me I will go, send me As the Lord Somebody, I will go. Send me that kind of hard disposition. Lord, I don't own myself, I don't own my time, I don't own my resources, I don't own anything. You made me for yourself. I am available and I am ready. I am on standby, waiting on the master for instructions and commands number two service involves running the errands of the master running the errands of your master the errands of your creator the errands of your creator the master again john chapter 2 verse 5 he showed us the errands going on assignment for god whether it is a soul winning assignment whether it is the assignment inside the house like this.
to make the avenue and the place convenient and comfortable for him to bless his people. Whether it's an assignment in the home, whatever it is. Running the errands of your master. Those who know you know that you are alive to run the errands of your master. That is kingdom service. Now, what are the dimensions of service that a person can offer? Number one is service with one's ability and capability. Serving God with what you are able to do with what you are capable of doing. This particular point will be general for all the services. Exodus chapter 36 verse 1 to 2 Then wrath Bezalel and Aholia and every wise hearted man in whom the Lord put wisdom and understanding to know how to walk all manner of work for the service of the sanctuary according to all that the Lord had commanded. And Moses called Bezalel and Aholiab and every wise hearted man in whose heart the Lord had put wisdom even everyone whose heart stirred him up to come unto the work to do it. That is, these people had certain capabilities, certain creativity that they deployed for the service of the sanctuary. You know that the worst waste that can happen to anybody is to have a capability that heaven needs and you only use it to make money until you die and leave this world. That is, there is something that you know how to do that can populate the kingdom. Something you know how to do that can enhance the kingdom. Something you know how to do that can shoot God's agenda forward. Something you know how to do that if you do, did it, it will pull more souls to the kingdom. Something you know how to do that if you did that thing, healings, miracles or whatever, and you only deploy that talent, skill, ability to either serve yourself or serve a, a particular purpose. It will be one of the worst forms of life's potential that can ever happen. It's like carrying a singing voice and using it to sing people to hell. Do you understand what I'm talking about? And using it to sing people to hell. Instead of using it to sing people to heaven. It's like having the capacity to talk. Or having the capacity to write. And write rubbish and garbage that sends people to hell. This is service unto God. Referring to your ability or capability and there are three forms of this. This is physical ability, mental ability, and spiritual ability. That is your energy. We have those deploying their energy to clean the house of the Lord for others to sit. There are people standing at the junction now directing traffic for the comfort of the rest of us. There are people I mean, that is physical energy. And then you have mental resources, your wisdom. And then your spiritual capability. This is the first aspect of service. And as we are different, our abilities are different. Our potentials are different. Our capabilities are different. That is first dimension of service the second dimension is service with one's resources serving god with the resources you have in exodus chapter 36 verse 3 to verse 5 the bible said and they received of moses all the offering 
which the children of Israel has brought, had brought for the work of the service. They brought offering for service of the sanctuary to make it without. And they brought yet unto him free offerings money every morning. And all the wise men that wrought all the work of the sanctuary came everyone, every man from his work which they made. And they spake unto Moses saying, the people bring more than enough for the service of the work which the Lord commanded to do. So your resources, your finances is part of your service to God. Nobody is excluded. Not the preacher. The, pa the pastor and the preacher cannot say I'm already preaching. I have already given myself to God. So I don't need to, 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 to give offering anymore. I don't need to tithe anymore. I have never as a person been comfortable to raise, a, take an offering where there is no offering in my own hand. I've been preaching on tithe and givings for 20 something years. And I've been giving tithes for 34 years. About 10 years before I ever became a pastor. And offerings. I gave it as a student in the high institution. No usher or choir member is excused from giving or giving God your resources. You don't, you don't become too busy doing other things and then your resources does not follow to serve. The Bible said in Psalm 22 verse 30, a seed shall serve him. Seed serve. A seed shall serve him. It shall be accounted to the Lord for a generation. My wife and I, by God's message, we are building a church in a village, one of our location churches by ourselves. And it will be my joy to be there soon to dedicate it. And I'm trusting God for how many of such will be done this year. That's from our pocket. I gave my wife a standing instruction. Separate this amount every month in six zeros. And this is for serving God in such and such location. So we have the service with our ability, our capability, and we have service with our resources, and you start from where you are. Now, having said all this, when is service acceptable? What makes service acceptable or profitable? Title it acceptable. Keys to acceptable and profitable service. Because it is possible for somebody to claim to be working for God and God is not aware. It is somebody, it's possible for somebody to work for God and that work for God was a waste. How, how is service acceptable and profitable? Number one, service must be done heartily and lovingly heartily and lovingly that is loving God the meaning of that is it must be done with the whole of the heart and out of love we have said before that service is a love language heartily and lovingly Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 12 Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 12 and now Israel, what does the Lord your God require of thee? But to fear the Lord your God, to walk in his ways, to love him and to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul. You love him, you serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. Out of love, out of love. Out of love, out of love. In fact, you want to divide yourself for God. The meaning of that is the deeper your love, the stronger your service. When a man, when a woman is in love with God, you don't beg him to do things for God. You don't beg them to do things for the house of God. The deeper your love for God, the stronger your service of him. I remember times coming up as a Christian, I didn't even know which department to belong to. I was almost like everywhere. Prayer band, I would go at times with them. Evangelism, 
choir. Just, you just want to tear yourself apart. It must be done with the heart of love. Joshua chapter 22 verse 5, on the same note, scripture is still speaking, Joshua chapter 22, say, but take diligent heed to do the commandment of and the law which Moses the servant of the Lord charged you to love the Lord your God to walk in all his ways to keep his commandment to cleave to him and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul you serve him with your heart you serve him with your soul first chronicles chapter 29 28 and in verse 9 also gives us a clue as to how service must be done he said and thou Solomon my son David was charging Solomon know thou the God of your father and serve him with a perfect heart with a perfect heart not a divided heart if you serve God like this higher, you, you, you will come to a point where the world will be asking you what did you do for God some of us are at the point where people are wondering what did what what did you do for God from from your heart of heart money is not in the question even what will I get out of it doesn't arise for a start service must be done heartily and lovingly number two service must be done willingly not not Behaving like someone is forcing you or compelling you to serve God. We just read that now in First Chronicles chapter 28 and in verse 9. Where the Bible said, Solomon, know thou the God of your father. Serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind. Willing. Not under duress. Not under compulsion. Not even not that they say we should do this thing now. They are just troubling us. Are just, just wasting men. If not that they say we should do this thing now. You know, just, but done willingly. In Second Chronicles chapter 9, verse 6 to 8, talking about giving. Sorry, Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 to 8, talking about giving. He said, but which I, this, this I say, he which swears sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which swears bountifully shall reap also bountifully. But every man, according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity. For God loveth a cheerful giver. I told you that giving of our resources is part of our service, and this is to be done willingly. Anything you, you do under pressure does not attract a reward from heaven. Anything you are doing as if you are doing God a favor or doing church a favor does not attract any reward from heaven. When you behave as if, oh, let us support the church or let us make things. No, no, no. You are willingly, you consider it a privilege to be involved. Number three, service must be done joyfully. Joyfully. Not mournfully joyfully you are cleaning the chairs joyfully you are standing ushering joyfully you are standing at the traffic control joyfully not angry with the people or frowning the face permanently if it will not be done joyfully it should be left completely it's a waste of service to be frowning and then be angry and then you, you sit here you back there and then you are angry with everybody. Maybe some frustration from somewhere is being transferred somewhere. It's a waste of service. I'll show you now. Psalm 100 verse 2. The Bible said, Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Serve the Lord with gladness. If you won't serve him with gladness, don't serve him at all. Serve the Lord with gladness. Malachi chapter 3 verse 14. Very interesting scripture. He said you have said it is vain to serve God. And what profit is it that we have kept his ordinance and that we have walked mournfully mournfully before the Lord. 
That is, they are doing the service months like somebody morning. For that purpose, they say it, it, it lacks profit. You can't serve God monthly and see the profitability of service. Monthful service is profitless service. Am I communicating? Serving in depression is serving to no satisfaction. Look at what he said. In Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 47. I wish the whole church was hearing this. He said, because thou servest not the Lord your God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things, therefore shall thou serve your enemies. Somebody say, God forbid. He said, since you have refused to serve God with happiness, look at, look at the, that next verse. Then you will serve your enemies, which the Lord shall send against you. And what enemy is that? Hunger, thirst, nakedness, the want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon your neck until you have destroyed it. Somebody say, God forbid. Am I communicating? Serving in depression. It is it is not just a waste of service, but an attraction of challenge. When you serve in depression, not only are you wasting the service, you are attracting problems. So it's better not to serve at all than to be serving God angrily. Better not to serve at all. That is point number three. Service must be done. Joyfully. It must be done heartily and lovingly. It must be done willingly. It must be done joyfully. Number four. Service must be done fervently and passionately. Romans chapter 12 verse 11. He said, not slothful in business. Fervent in spirit. Serving the Lord. That is beyond fire. Serve with fire. Serve with enthusiasm, optimism positivism. Let people catch fire when they come near you. Serve with fire. Sing with fire. Choir with fire. Counsel with fire. Usher with fire. Be, be in the prayer band with fire. Don't, don't, don't be a lukewarm person. Serve the Lord. He said, not slothful in business. Fervent in spirit. The approved frequency for service. Is the frequency of fire. Fervent in spirit. Serving the Lord. That was why he said in Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 10. Whatsoever your hand finds to do. Do it with your might. If your hand finds God's work to do. Do it with your energy. If you found yourself in the sanctuary to work for God. Do it with your energy. Whatsoever your hand finds to do. Do it with your might. Somebody say a loud amen. Is anybody getting anything at all? I will concentrate of, on those four points for this service. But let me enumerate the other ones that I will mention in the other service, services. Number five, service must be done in sincerity. In sincerity. In sincerity. I will look at that in detail in the next service. Number six, service must be done in humility. No arrogance, no braggadociousness. People that are never humble cannot serve God. It must be done in humility. I'll give the scriptural references in the appropriate service. And then read them. Number seven. Service must be done in uprightness and godly fear. Uprightness. Can't be cheating in the office and lying and stealing and smoking and drinking humanizing or menizing as the case may be. And then, on Sunday morning, here you are. It must be done in uprightness. If it is to be profitable, if it is to be profitable, if it is to be acceptable, he said we should serve God with reverence and godly fear, for our God is a consuming fire. I'll look at that. That was Hebrews 12, 28 to 29. We'll look at that. In the next service. Number eight. Service must be devoid of. Eye service and men pleasing. And it is stated like that in scripture. 
eye service and men pleasing. You do things when people are seeing you and you are just on your own when nobody is seeing you. If it is to be rewarded, if it is to be profitable. Number nine, service must be done with the end of time in mind. That is to be aware that one day we will stand before God to give the account of what we did for him on earth with the end of time in mind. It must be done with the end of time in mind. We'll look at that in the third service. Number 10. Service must be done faithfully. It is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Faithfully. You should be reliable. That is, people, people should be, whoever, those who work with you should be sure that you are there when you are meant to be there. The blessing of God follows the faithful. Where a man is not faithful but fake fool. Results can't be seen. Faithful. Must be done faithfully. We'll look at that in the third service. Eleven. Service must be done obediently. That is in obedience to his voice. What do, what do you want me to do, Lord? How do you want me to serve? Finally, number 12. Service must be done from the place of intimacy with God. A place of intimacy. After he prayed in the book of Mark, the Bible said he appointed 12 that should be with him and that he might send them. From the place that was Mark 3, 13 and 14. We'll look at all that in detail at the appropriate service. But I want you to have at least a slight glimpse of every, every of the points. Irrespective of which service you are in. This is how service can be. First, it must be done heartily and lovingly. Second, it must be done willingly. And then, it must be done joyfully. Then, it must be done fervently and passionately. Then, it must be done with sincerity. Just not, no, no strangers. Then service must be done in humility. And then number seven, it must be done in uprightness and godly fear. And then must be devoid of eye service and men pleasing. And then it must be done with the end of time in mind. One day I will stand before God to testify as to what I did in his kingdom. And then it must be done faithfully. And then it must be done obediently. And then it must be done from the place of intimacy with God. And of course, oh, I haven't mentioned number 12. Yes, place of intimacy with God. In conclusion, what is the profit of service? I may not be able to go in all the detail today, but we'll leave this for next Sunday. But let's look at basically Exodus 23 and in verse 25. I already told you service is a covenant. You shall serve the Lord your God and he shall bless. If you stop there, it made sense. You shall serve the Lord your God and he shall bless. God cannot serve himself. A man cannot bless himself. If you give God service, he gives you the blessing. You shall serve the Lord your God and he shall bless. If you do for God what he can't do for himself or he doesn't do for himself, he will, he must do for you what you can't do for yourself. This blessing is three-pronged and then I'll close there. What, when we say you serve the Lord, he blesses you. What does it mean? A, it means there is the guarantee of divine goodwill. You, you are guaranteed divine goodwill. That is, Jehovah says, I am happy with you. And if God is happy with a man, it doesn't matter who is unhappy with that man. That is a waste of unhappiness. That is a waste of anger, a waste of emotion. 
you have the guarantee of divine goodwill. That is the implication of the blessing. Secondly, you have the guarantee of divine supplies. We may repeat some of this next week. And he shall bless your bread and your water. To his will, he pays your bills. I'm talking from experience. Do his will and he pays your bills. You shall serve the guarantee of divine supplies. And finally, he shall bless means the frustration of earthly curses. As light is the answer to darkness, the blessing is the cure for causes. You shall bless, you shall, you shall, you shall serve, and it shall bless. It is the frustration of earthly curses. Next Sunday, you will, you will realize that service is a deliverance tool. You will realize it when we talk about this next Sunday. Somebody say amen. I welcome you today, beloved brothers and sisters. 2020, don't be a bench-warming, pew-sitting Christian. Refuse to be redundant and just be an observer. No. Be involved in dragging the multitudes, compelling them to come that his house may be filled. Use your wisdom, use your talent, use your potential. In the enlargement of the kingdom, use your resources. Don't let things be happening and you don't know how they are happening. Be involved. It's a new day for you. I see something exploding and breaking forth for somebody. Is, is there someone here who received something this morning? You had something tangible this morning? Stand up on your feet with a loud shout of praise.